Hello everyone. So you have landed on this video. So probably you might be looking for an installation guide to either dual boot your system or properly run a Linux distro. So we're going to use Ubuntu. So dual booting isn't just about running two OS. It's, it's about control. You want to leverage the flexibility of Linux without abandoning Windows. So in this video, we'll install Ubuntu 24 LTS alongside Windows 10 or 11. We are going to uh, we are going deep in file system, BIOS setting, bootloaders, and everything. So this isn't just a normal click next and hope guide. It's it's an engineer's route. So if you're ready, let's build it right. But before the installation, you will need few things. First of all, you need to have a laptop or your desktop, whatever it is. Another thing is you you're gonna need a USB drive. It's uh, the minimum requirement is eight GB pen drive in which we are going to load the operating system right so there's one trigger warning back up all your important data before the installation process uh, process because it, it might go wrong or not so it's, it's good to have a backup plan right before going into each and everything uh, let's do two things uh, I'm gonna open my browser I'll search for Ubuntu here and on the official website we can just uh, download Ubuntu so this is the official website of Ubuntu and now we are going to download Ubuntu ISO file from here so just search for download Ubuntu section download Ubuntu desktop and download it so it's going to perform automatic download and yeah it's it's downloading in the background let it complete in the background and another thing which we are going to install is that is Rufus So Rufus is basically to create a bootable USB drive. So uh, as of today Rufus 4.7 EXE is the uh, updated version so I am going to download it. Just close this ad and yes. So let the download complete in the background. What we are going to do is we will have to disable the bit locker in the Windows setting. And so what's BitLocker? BitLocker is Microsoft full uh, disk encryption. It protects your data uh, by encrypting partitions using trusted platform modules. So basically why we need to disable the BitLocker is if it is left enabled, it kind of uh, may interfere with the partition and bootloader installation and your Ubuntu might not work properly. So that is why we are uh, disabling the BitLocker. So for that all you need to do is go to the control panel settings on your Windows machine search for BitLocker uh, drive encryption and make sure this BitLocker is off if it's on uh, you need to turn it off it's it's going to take some time to decrypt the whole drive uh, so have some patience so once your BitLocker is disabled and uh, everything is like downloaded So we are going to create a bootable USB drive. So now the ISO file is downloaded and Rufus is also downloaded. So we are going to create a bootable USB drive. So first go to your download section. This is the Rufus exe file. Double click on it. Press yes. And this is the Rufus interface. So this is the uh, 8 GB SanDisk pen drive which I am using. So I am going to just plug it in. Now the no label 8 GB disk is detected over here and I am going to select the ISO file so from this select the ISO file that is Ubuntu 24.04.2 LTS desktop version open it and we have to uh, take the partition scheme as GPT only so GPT allows for more than four primary partition that is why we are using GPT and uh, for the target system we have to use UEFI non-CSM so yeah, it's it's default, and the file system type is uh, FAT32, right? Just start the process. It's it's going to give some warning like ISO hybrid image detected, or it might not give you a warning. So right in the ISO image, that is the recommended. So I'm going to perform that. Warning: all data will be lost. So yes, all data on your uh, pen drive will be lost during this. So make sure you don't have anything important in the pen drive, right? So it's creating a. a, a it's going to basically burn the ISO on the pen drive and it's, it's going to say, uh, take few minutes so let's wait after few minutes 
so let this installation complete in the background it's going to say uh, take around 5 to 10 minutes in the meantime what we are going to do is we are going to create a partition on our hard drive so ubuntu recommends at least 50 gb of uh, space so we, we we are going to create that so for that search on uh, your windows search tab uh, to create hard disk partition create and format hard disk partition just right click on that and this is so basically i have 97.66 gb of unallocated space over here if you don't have it in in if you don't have it so uh, you will have to shrink your volume and create a 50 gb of space so i already have it so i am going to just uh, create a new sample volume here so from next next and uh, it's going to be t mod everything in empty and tfs folder next so make sure the file system is ext fat uh, it can uh, like during the installation of ubuntu we are going to uh, change it to ext4 because that is the file system ubuntu is using and ntfs is the file system which uh, is which windows is using right so let's perform a quick format and create the drive over here let's finish the process so the new volume for 97.66 gb x file is created and same can be reflected over here so yeah this this is 97.6 gb of the free space right and uh, we'll wait for this process to complete we'll be back shortly so now the iso is burned into uh, the usb drive so that part is done now we have to like change some bios setting so uh, now we are going to shut down this pc now we will have to change few bios setting uh, for that uh, you will have to find the bios key either it's going to be f1 f2 f10 or f11 12 so based on the oems you can google uh, your pc's name and all the all the details and you can find the bios key over there so the bios key to this laptop is uh, f1 so i'm going to boot it and press F1 repeatedly during the boot. So now it's entering into BIOS setup. So uh, here things can go a little bit different because every manufacturer has their own BIOS. So your might look a bit different than mine, but uh, most of the settings are going to be same. So what we have to do is, uh, like we have to use AHCI uh, instead of RAID. So RAID is uh, basically random array of independent disk. It is commonly enabled on laptop uh, by the provider itself. Uh, maybe uh, on intel processors so but linux uh, uh, inbuilt does not have the capacity or i, I would say nati native environment to support raid but you can uh, after the installation you can uh, set up your raid and all that so we want uh, uh, advanced source control interfo interface that is ahci so you can find it either in the config or you can have other settings so uh, here it's it's not even present so i, I cannot show it but in your PC it might show up another thing is if uh, secure boot is enabled disable the secure boot and uh, that, that that's it I'm going to save and exit that is the F10 key that's going to ask me to change the configuration and the yes so now you have to search the boot menu key so in my case this is F12 and in your system it can be different and when you are entering the boot menu you have to select the pen drive which you have inserted so here's the SanDisk cruise blade so I'm going to click on this Get to so now it's asking to try or install Ubuntu and I'm going to click enter on that and we'll see a trial installation page of the Ubuntu. Wait for a few moments to let it prepare for the Ubuntu installation. So uh, choose your language. In my case it's English so I'm going to choose English and select next and the keyboard layout that is English US next and it's better to connect to the wi-fi or ethernet so i'm going to connect to the wi-fi which here it's going to connect now it's asking if i want to try ubuntu or install ubuntu so yes basically we are here to install ubuntu so i'm going to click install and it's going to interactive installation not automated one so next uh, so this section is about uh, what kind of apps do you want pre-installed. So I am going to just select the default selection that is just the web browser and basic utilities. Uh, yes, I want to install the third party software 
for graphics and Wi-Fi uh, wi and uh, additional support and media format can be installed later so but in case you want to install it right now you can you can do it as well just click on next how do you want to install Ubuntu? Erase disk can install. Uh, no, we don't want to erase the whole disk because our Windows is already there. So we are going to perform a manual installation. So click on manual. In, in some cases, it can also show you do you want to install alongside Windows. So if that uh, section is visible to you, good luck. You can use that too. But uh, in this case, we are going to perform a manual installation. I am going to select next and uh, device. Uh, so this is the hard drive and this is the SSD I am having NVMe 256GB. And the partition which we have created is. is that was the XFET format, right? So here it is. I am going to select it. So this was the partition which we are having. So uh, I would recommend do not do not tamper with this Windows Boot Manager because this is your Windows and all that. Just select on the partition which you have created. That is 104 uh, ZB is around. I am going to change it. Click on change and we it unloaded. I am going to reformat it to ext4, which is the file type system we want to use. And mounting point to root. Click OK. Now the tick box is uh, the checkbox is ticked, and I'm going to click on Next. It is going to uh, ask you to create a username password for for the system. So here it is. Data Monk ThinkPad ThinkPad. It's it's okay. Password password can be. Make sure make sure your password both the password matches or it won't let you proceed yes click on next select the time zone so i am in india so i'm going to select my time zone if you are from any other country or another time zone uh, select accordingly and just click on install so now it's going to take some time copy some file restructure the file format and everything and ubuntu will be installed in like five to ten minutes So now the installation is complete. So we need to restart. Just restart, uh, click on restart, remove the USB drive, and you're good to go. So now the grub menu has opened, and you can see we have Ubuntu here and we have Windows Boot Manager also here. So we are going to click on Ubuntu and just press enter. Let's see how did the installation go. Now this was the user we have created. So I'm going to enter the password here and the Ubuntu installation is successful. So I'm going to just shut it down and, and see if we have the windows working or not. Just power it off. Power it on again. This time instead of Ubuntu, I'm going to select Windows Boot Manager. And Windows is also loaded. So you can see now we have uh, two operating system that is Windows and Ubuntu running alongside on a single machine. So the dual boot process has complete. Thank you for watching.